welcome back to my channel and in case you haven't checked this out you should this is my new merch and it's lucky cat on the cello it's called the cello kitty collection with many different colors and different shirts so check it all out all down below so today we're gonna talk all about my 200 year old cello. well actually it's not quite 200 years old it's about 170 years old around but we don't know exactly and i'm gonna tell you all about it. Why is it so old? How much is it worth? Why are instruments so expensive when they're old? Are old instruments better than new ones? I'm going to answer every single one of your questions. So let's get started. So let me first tell you a story about how I bought this instrument and I've had this since I was a teenager. So I've had it for many, many years. And my mom actually borrowed money from my grandmother in order for me to have this instrument why is it so important to have a, a very good instrument and usually an older instrument sounds really good not always the case but a lot of people invest in older instruments because they increase in value as they get older why is that because instruments that were made let's say two or three hundred years ago right there are only a certain amount of them in the world and if they're made by renowned famous violin instrument makers then they cannot really be replicated people do try to replicate like a lot of instrument makers um, actually have tried to replicate the most famous maker of violins which is Stradivarius you may have heard of it a Strad or Stradivarius um, those instruments have this mysterious sound quality that they still quite exactly figure out what is it in the wood and also in the craftsmanship in order to make the sound so beautiful and for centuries many makers and luthiers have tried to copy the strats and to a certain extent many can and have produced instruments that are just as good because there's only so many strat cellos and violins in the world think of it as like museum pieces like when you think about paintings like Monet, Renoir, and during their lifetimes, they could produce a certain amount of artwork. And as they get passed on and over the years, they just increase in value because they're famous artists. So it's the same thing with instruments. They become very valuable as the years go on. And there's also something to the wood of the instrument. The older the wood, it uh, creates a deeper sound and a better sound. Now, some modern instrument makers may argue that is not true, um, but I think it's just a matter of opinion. There's some really, really strong modern instruments that were made in the last 10, 15, 20, even 50 years ago that sound as good as, let's say, a Strat, or in this case, my child, which I'm going to tell you about but that's arguable because they increase in value because there are just so many of them from the past, from famous makers. So I hope that kind of explains why instruments are so expensive. Now let's get on to all about my beautiful instrument, which by the way, I nicknamed it Sebastian. Oh no, it's not nicknamed after Sebastian Bach, because I'm sure that's what you're thinking about, but no, no, no. It's actually named after Sebastian the Crab from Little Mermaid. When I was young, I loved the Little Mermaid. And I love that little crab. I thought he was cute. So I was like, my shell is going to be named after Sebastian the Crab. So that's why. So that's one fun fact about my cello. My cello is 170 years old. And in terms of who actually made my instrument is still a mystery. I will explain why. So usually when you look inside what we call the F holes, which is right around here, these are F holes. When you look inside, there is a label which says what year the instrument was made and also by what maker. Now my instrument was labeled to be made by a very, very famous French maker, N.F. Villon, in 1866. So now I don't know how much you know about um, instrument makers, but the Villon family in France, they were really famous because they had generations of luthiers or instrument makers in the family and there, there are a few of them that have been really really famous and M NF Viome is one of the famous ones and the other one, the brother, JB Viome, was also very very famous. So if you just looked at the label, you would think that that was made by Viome, but according to my documentation when I purchased the cello, the person who evaluated the instrument 
thought that this instrument was actually made by a German-born American called George Gmunder. This is kind of interesting because George Gmunder actually worked in the Viong shop in France, in Paris, for like three years. So he worked there and obviously learned from the Viong family. He specifically worked with J.B. Viong, who was really, really famous, along with his brother that I told you about. So this instrument has all the characteristics of a French instrument, um, but it doesn't say his name. And this was a very common practice in the past, apparently, like, you know, an instrument maker might put like the Strad name or like some other people's name, famous people's names. George Gmunder actually worked in the Viome shop and he was kind of interesting because he was German born went to Paris and worked in the Viome shop, but then moved to New York City and had stayed there ever since. And he also had a family of luthiers, so, and he became very famous as well. So now, how much is this cello evaluated to be? So we don't really know because what you have to do is you have to take an instrument to someone who can give it an evaluation of and to verify when it was made, whether it's genuinely Gmunder or Viom or someone else. And so they are not able to verify it yet. But in my heart, I do believe that this was made by George Gmunder. How do I know? I don't know. I just feel it. I've had this instrument for years. My theory is that he made this instrument when he was working in the Viom shop. So then he just slapped the Viom label on it, but it was probably his craftsmanship. This instrument has a gorgeous tone, and you guys you guys always ask me, how do you get such a beautiful sound on the cello? And I'm telling you, part of it is um, really just the beauty of the instrument. Of course, you also have to have good maintenance. You know, you have to take, your, take care of your cello very well and make sure the bridge is straight, you have good strings to go along with it, and then experiment with the right strings for your instrument because each instrument has its own characteristics so you kind of have to figure out what works for your instrument I also feel like instruments mold to the player's personality a little bit um, and it becomes the player's personality and as I've worked with this instrument for so many years I have developed technique just for this instrument and the instrument responds to me and so I, I feel like it really has a beautiful sound because I have in my head a certain sound and I mold it. In terms of value of this instrument, we don't know. It could be anywhere between $40,000 to $200,000, $300,000 if this were a genuine, true George Gmunder. But the last person who evaluated it wouldn't give me that evaluation. But I'm also guessing it's because he didn't want to sell it. I'm going to keep going to different people to properly appraise the cello. In my heart, this cello is very valuable. The last question is, do you really need such a valuable instrument? Yes, for me as a professional cellist, um, you know, I do these videos about like compare the $200 cello to $200,000 cello, whatever, you know, I do these um, things for fun on YouTube and of course you're all correct because you cannot really genuinely hear how it sounds through the computer or the phone. And even with my recording, it's a decent recorder, but still, it's not like live. Sometimes you also have to consider the following things. Number one, how does it respond to the player? And the quicker the response, if it does what the player needs it to do, then is a better instrument, right? And also how it projects in a venue. So let's say if I were playing Dvorak cello concerto with an orchestra, you know, I need an instrument that can project all the way at the back of the hall. And a good instrument has that ability to do that. It is able to project, is able to express exactly what the player wants, um, and it can create different tones and colors in the sound that you can't do with a $200 Cello, and yes, you know, like someone who's just starting to learn the cello, you don't need an instrument that is 200,000, a million, or any, anything like that because you're still learning the mechanics of playing the cello, but for someone like me, who's a professional cellist, that this is what I do for a living, where every note that I play is with love and intention, and I'm trying to give it that energy through the instrument, through the hall, the venue, 
uh, or, or also even, you know, on YouTube, it really makes a difference. So yes, so in that case, it is absolutely necessary for someone like me. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you found this video valuable or entertaining or educational or fun to watch, drop me a comment, drop me a like, subscribe, share this video. It really helps me out. And let me know what other video ideas you have for me. So I'll see you very soon. Bye.